Amy Hall's story, you heard that China now leads the world in renewable energy consumption. This includes energy production from wind, solar, geothermal, biomass, and waste. The energy company BP says China's renewable consumption last year was the equivalent of 86 million metric tons of oil. I talked with Ron Ping Song about why that is so important. He manages the Developing Country Climate Program at the World Resources Institute. If the world have any chance to meet the Paris Agreement target, which is trying to you know, control the temperature rise to below 2 degrees, the world actually need to stop the increase of greenhouse gas emissions by 2020. If you think about it, it's only three years away from now. So it means that, you know, for now, about 24 percent of the world energy was powered by renewable energy. In four years' time, in three years' time, this has to be hit about 30 percent. So that's just short term. Over the longer term, that means that essentially all of our power has to come coming from zero carbon power, you know, around the time of 2050. And this is a tremendous effort, and it's a long way to go. I want to run some numbers for you. Uh, one of the industries that China is helping transform is the solar energy. So last year, more than three in every 10 solar panels installed globally were in China. That's uh, almost as much as Germany and the United States combined. But China, as we know, is still very heavily reliant on coal. And that process will take quite some time. So what does that mean for the world's efforts to clean up its energy sources? Yeah, it's actually a very hard question, right? How are we going to transit trans away from the current, you know, coal-heavy economy to a more clean uh, energy economy? So, well, I think most of all it requires, you know, a very honest conversation, what this is all about. So we have to have a very honest conversation, understanding that this is a long-term trend. The coal and fossil fuel energy is not coming back. So first of all, we have to understand that, have an honest conversation, and have a really good understanding and political will to drive toward the directions. Have that understanding that will actually tell us that we should not invest in any new coal power plants, any coal new mines. Um, at least in a few years, that should be a complete stop. Because if you invest that, it's a stranded asset in a few years. So it means that asset that you actually lost value over time. And if you invest new labor, for, labor force, that actually is a uh, worst case scenario. Because those people who lock in the industries will not be able to gain the technical and skill to work in other industries. And have the understanding, and then we should come up to build a new economy, which is driven by the new technology, renewable energy technologies, as well as you know, urban smart transportation, uh, which has you know new uh, component of service industries, you know, leveraging the, all the power that the internet is creating, and doing that in a just transition way, meaning that actually make sure uh, all the coal miners and you know power plant workers who will lost their job in the next few years or over that decade, they will have enough. Uh, training skill set as well as social safety net to make sure that they have some basic security and help them to transit away uh, from, our, uh, from the current economy to a low carbon economy. What would you say the momentum is right now in terms of greener sources of energy? Is it a universal world effort or is the United States decision to leave the Paris Climate Accord um, making a big impact here. You just mentioned uh, the G20 last week with the U.S. again being the only country out of the group. Yes, I would say part. that I would say that it's almost a universal effort besides the U.S. Uh, as we can see that there's, now it's a G19 countries versus U.S. Uh, all of these countries are already overly and repeatedly stated their confirmation and their resolve to carry on to reach the Paris Agreement, to implement the Paris Agreement to create a new economy. So even in the U.S., we see besides the federal government, the states and cities and businesses actually wrapping up their efforts. Uh, I think today there's a new initiative called American Pledge was just launched that trying to check and, uh, and account for what are the actual actions and difference that uh, the states and cities and businesses are doing in the, in the U.S. So even in the U.S., this is our very strong force behind the drive to implement Paris Agreement. So I think that actually is pretty strong indication that at least it's not universal, but almost universal of the world is actually going toward the same goal.